The global aviation world was stunned China's C919 had just completed its first commercial flight powered by a homegrown CJ-1000 engine. Headlines flashed from Shanghai to Seattle, shaking up boardrooms and governments. For years, the C9Y9 flew with Western engines. This flight, with the Shenyang CJ-1000A, changed everything. It marked China's arrival as a true aerospace creator, not just a customer. Stock prices of GE and Boeing trembled. The duopoly was officially challenged. This was the result of a massive state-driven push by Beijing a direct answer to U.S. efforts to contain China's tech rise. The roar of that engine over the Great Wall was more than mechanical power. It was a geopolitical statement. At Beijing Capital Airport, the C919 was greeted with a water cannon salute and crowds waving red flags. This was more than engineering success. It was a victory in a technological cold war. The message to Washington, your restrictions didn't ground us. They forced us to build our own wings. The world now faced a credible third competitor in commercial aviation. China wasn't just building airframes, it was mastering the most complex part, the engine. The C-919's journey from dependency to self-reliance is a story of ambition, restriction, and unintended consequences. And it all began not in a factory, but in the corridors of power in Washington, D.C. A single decision there would reshape the future of the skies. To grasp the impact of China's engine breakthrough, we need to understand America's strategy. U.S. policymakers saw China's military-civil fusion as a threat. Any advanced tech for civilian use could be adapted for military power. The CFM Leap Engine, powering Boeing, Airbus, and the C919, was a crown jewel the U.S. wanted to protect. The fear, China would replicate this tech for its own jets and military eroding U.S. air superiority. Years of intellectual property theft and forced tech transfers fueled these concerns. Jet engine technology is the pinnacle of industrial capability. Few nations can master it. By restricting access, the U.S. aimed to slow China's military modernization and keep its strategic edge. This wasn't just trade policy, it was national security. The U.S. sought to build a high-yard, small fence around the most sensitive tech, like engines and semiconductors. The rest of the economy would remain open, but the fence was meant to be impenetrable. Yet as 2025 shows, even a small fence can have huge, unexpected consequences. Instead of containment, the policy sparked a race. The world was about to see just how fast China could run. U.S. restrictions weren't a simple ban. They were a web of export controls and blacklists. The Export Administration regulations targeted dual-use tech, especially jet engines and their components. The entity list blacklisted Chinese aerospace firms, making it nearly impossible for U.S. companies to do business with them. Restrictions extended beyond engines to alloys, manufacturing equipment, and critical software. The U.S. pressured allies to adopt similar controls, aiming for a global tech blockade. The goal? Cut off China from the knowledge and materials needed to build its own engine industry. But the policy underestimated China's resolve. Instead of halting progress, the blockade became a catalyst. The quest for a domestic jet engine became a matter of national pride and survival. Each new restriction only fueled China's determination. What was meant to be a cage became a starting gun. The technological race was on, and China was all in. Beijing's response was immediate and massive. The C9Y9 and its engine became a top national priority, symbolic of the China dream. Billions were poured into the Aero Engine Corporation of China, uniting top scientists and engineers. China invested in new materials, testing facilities, and fundamental research, closing a gap that took the West decades to bridge. Simultaneously, engineers reverse-engineered Western designs and rapidly iterated prototypes. Failures were treated as data points, not disasters. With state backing, setbacks only fueled progress. The mission break the Western monopoly on jet engines, no matter the cost. The breakthrough came in late 2025. The C919, powered by the CJ-1000A, completed its first commercial flight. Western analysts had doubted China could build a reliable high-bypass turbofan so soon. The flight proved them wrong. Years of secretive development, ground tests, and flight trials paid off. 
The CJ1000A isn't yet a match for the latest Western engines. It's heavier and less efficient, but it works, and it's Chinese. The first goal was viability, not supremacy. Now, Comac and Chinese airlines are free from foreign sanctions and can improve on their own terms. The CJ1000A is just the beginning, a foundation for a new family of engines. With a domestic engine, China can sell the C9Y9 without Western approval, shifting the strategic landscape. The C9Y9 is now a truly Chinese jet, no longer vulnerable to outside pressure. Emboldened, China is already developing the next-generation CJ2000 for its wide-body C929. The era of dependence is over. The C999's arrival ends the Boeing Airbus duopoly. Comac now competes directly with the 737 MAX and A320neo. While the C999's domestic engine lags in efficiency, it has a huge advantage. China's massive home market. Beijing ensures state-owned airlines order hundreds of C919s, guaranteeing production and scale. This protected market forces Boeing and Airbus to fight for relevance in China. For developing nations, the C919 offers attractive financing and freedom from U.S. export controls. Western airlines may stick with familiar brands, but the C919 is poised to win big in the developing world. Challenges remain, global support networks and Western certifications are lacking. Without FAA or ESA approval, the C919 can't reach major international airlines. But with the CJ1000A, China is playing the long game methodically closing the gap. The competition has only just begun. The rise of the C919 is a double-edged sword for America. Policies meant to protect U.S. tech have created a formidable Chinese competitor. GE and its partners lose every time a C919 rolls out with a Chinese engine. The ripple effect hits the entire U.S. aerospace supply chain. Lost sales, lost jobs, lost market share. As China designs out American components, U.S. firms are cut from the world's fastest-growing market. The profits that once funded American innovation are drying up. The gamble to contain China has backfired, weakening the very industry it aimed to protect. The consequences will echo for years. China's self-sufficient aviation industry marks a seismic shift in global power. For 70 years, the West set the rules, built the planes, and controlled the skies. The C999's flight with a Chinese engine is the first major crack in that dominance. China is building its own ecosystem, hardware, standards, and certifications. As more countries buy Chinese jets, China's aviation authority gains influence, potentially splitting the world into rival standards. U.S. leverage over aviation is diminished. Nations now have a real alternative. Aerospace becomes a new front in global diplomacy and competition. The rise of the C919 mirrors trends in telecom, EVs, and renewables. The era of unchallenged Western tech supremacy is ending. The skies are now a contested multipolar domain. The C919 saga offers a lesson technological containment is tough and often backfires. U.S. restrictions accelerated China's self-sufficiency, not its stagnation. The real challenge for the West is to out-innovate not just out-block. Globalization is fragmenting. Tech supply chains are now battlegrounds. Companies must navigate a world where access can vanish overnight. The C9Y9's flight has redrawn the map for global tech competition. The final destination? Still unknown. As the C9 9 soars, its impact is felt far beyond China's borders. International aviation regulators now face a new reality certifying aircraft not just from the established West, but from a rapidly advancing East. The C-919's entry challenges long-standing norms, prompting debates over safety standards, certification processes, and the politics of approval. For global airlines, the equation is shifting. More competition means more choices, potentially lower costs, but also new uncertainties. Will the C9Y9 be embraced by carriers in Europe, Africa, or South America? Or will regulatory hurdles and geopolitical pressure keep it grounded outside China? Meanwhile, Boeing and Airbus must adapt. The old duopoly is cracking, and with it, the global market's rules are being rewritten. As new players emerge, the skies are becoming more crowded and more contested than ever before. 
The C9Y9 isn't just an airplane. It's a test of how the world will navigate the next era of aviation, where innovation, regulation, and rivalry all take flight together. As the dust settles from the C9-19's dramatic debut, the world's leading aviation experts are weighing in on what's next. At the heart of their analysis lies a single question. Who will master the engines that power the future? Industry analysts point to a new wave of propulsion technology, hybrid electric systems, sustainable fuels, and next-generation turbofans as the real battleground. China's rapid progress with the C919's engine signals a seismic shift, but American and European firms are also racing to reinvent what's possible in the skies. Aerospace engineers predict that the next decade will see unprecedented collaboration and competition. Some foresee joint ventures between unlikely partners, while others warn of deepening divides as nations guard their technological secrets. According to Dr. Li Wei, an aeronautics professor in Shanghai, the power of an aircraft is no longer just in its engines, but in its ecosystem, data, connectivity, and green technology. Meanwhile, Western experts caution that dominance in engine design remains a crucial lever of global influence, shaping not just trade, but geopolitics. As the balance of aerospace power shifts, the only certainty is change. The world's skies are becoming a proving ground for innovation, ambition, and national pride. The next chapter of aviation will be written not just by engineers or politicians, but by the engines and ideas that propel us forward. As China's C919 taxis onto the global stage, the ripples are being felt far beyond the runway. Airlines across Asia, Africa, and even parts of Europe are re-evaluating their fleet strategies, drawn by the promise of a new, cost-competitive alternative to Boeing and Airbus. Early orders from emerging markets signal a thirst for diversification and a readiness to challenge the status quo. But as the C-999 gains altitude, international aviation regulators are under pressure. Agencies like the FAA and EASA face tough questions. How do they certify aircraft designed outside traditional Western hubs? What standards must be met to ensure global safety and interoperability? In response, some nations are tightening their certification processes, wary of political influence over safety data. Others are calling for a unified global framework, one that balances innovation with rigorous oversight. Industry insiders warn that regulatory fragmentation could delay the C-999's wider adoption, but also spark overdue reform in how the world governs the skies. For passengers, the impact may be invisible, but profound. More competition could mean cheaper tickets, new routes, and greener technologies. Yet the stakes are high. The push for global acceptance of the C919 is not just a commercial race, but a test of trust, transparency, and international cooperation. As the world watches China's aviation ambitions take flight, one thing is clear. The global market is in motion, and the rules of the game may never be the same again. As the dust settles from the initial shockwaves of the C9-19's debut, the question looms, what comes next for the world's aerospace giants? Behind closed doors, Western and Chinese companies are weighing their options. Will the future be defined by fierce competition or by groundbreaking cooperation? Some industry analysts envision a new era of joint ventures, where Western expertise in avionics and safety seamlessly merges with China's manufacturing prowess and relentless drive for innovation. Imagine a future where hybrid aircraft integrate the best of both worlds, ultra-efficient engines, advanced composite materials, and cutting-edge digital cockpits, born from cross-continental collaboration. Such partnerships could accelerate the race towards sustainable aviation, pushing boundaries in electric propulsion, autonomous flight, and greener fuels. Yet, the path forward is anything but certain. Deep-seated rivalries, intellectual property concerns, and geopolitical tensions threaten to keep the world's aerospace sectors locked in a high-stakes standoff. Trade barriers and export controls could stifle innovation, as each side scrambles to outpace the other in a quest for technological supremacy. Still, some pioneers are betting on dialogue over division. New research alliances, talent exchanges, and co-development projects are quietly taking shape, hinting at a future where shared challenges, 
like climate change and air traffic congestion, demand collective solutions. Whether the skies ahead are turbulent or clear will depend on choices made today. Collaboration could unlock the next wave of aviation breakthroughs. Rivalry, the next era of disruption. One thing is certain, as east meets west at 30,000 feet, the future of flight will be shaped not just by competition, but by the possibility of working together to reach new horizons.